thank you so much for tuning into this video but a special thanks has to go out to my channel members i appreciate you guys so much we have a lot of fun over there we have special emojis we have private live streams i show you my training i make videos for your eyes only so thank you to all the members who are there supporting my channel and should you want to become a member make sure you click the join button down below it's optional you don't have to but feel free to we have a good time now enjoy the video Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leona, I'm also a car transformation. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also, also a bodybuilder. And what I'm not, I'm not a doctor, a nutritionist or a dietitian. Unlike Stephanie Butterbore, who is a doctor, I believe she specializes in cancer research. And uh, today we're gonna to do a reaction to her honest Q&A. A couple of people have asked me to do this. I'm not sure how it's gonna go. I may just skip over some questions depending if I think they're relevant. I have covered Stephanie a couple of times because speaking is difficult apparently today, so bear with me. So I have covered her a few times because she did the all-in approach. Basically, she got famous for doing eating challenges and then she decided to do the all-in approach to cure her hunger that couldn't her insatiable hunger as well as her amonorrhea and then she gained quite a lot of weight and then she pe people were critical of that because basically she just put on a lot of weight really quickly which is to me to me just as unhealthy as losing a lot of weight really quickly i should say that yes i do think prep is unhealthy i have never said that i think it is healthy the food you eat usually is it's just a process of dropping body fat to very low levels it is unhealthy despite how good you may look it messes you up mentally it may there's a lot of issues that come with it um so i don't recommend prep to pretty much anybody anybody has ever messaged me asking whether or not what i think if they should do bodybuilding shows or not i always am really really honest with them and most people do re rethink twice before they do it just because i like doing it doesn't mean that i encourage other people to do it so she did the all-in challenge and she kind of became uh, a member of, well Maybe she didn't become a member of the fat acceptance haze movement, but they kind of adopted her. Since then, got some backlash from people within the fitness community. From what I understand, she struggles with the opinions of others online, which I don't understand why. If you go online, you have to be mindful that people are going to have opinions of you. Again, that's something I tell people that message me about becoming a YouTuber. I'm like, go for it. Just be aware that you're, people are going to talk shit about you. People are going to be horrible in your comment sections and people will talk shit about you. That's just the reality of it. So unless you're cool with that, don't go online. So there's that. And that's the video we're going to look at today. Let's just get the obvious out of the way. As you can tell, I do have some pretty horrible cold sores right now. This is part of the reason why I had to take the weekend off from social media and filming and editing and stuff because of the fact that I'm, I have a bad habit of taking too much hay on my fork and especially if I'm sleeping bad for a few days. It just gets a bit too much, but um, regardless, any members video, I have a members live stream on later today where I'm gonna go through home workouts and exercises you can do at home with resistance bands and just dumbbells, maybe even a barbell if you have it. Otherwise, I'm gonna try and perhaps not upload quite as much this week as what I normally do on either channel simply because I need to work on a 60 day slash eight week shred for the new year where I'm basically gonna roll out an eight week shred and I'm, I've been that's something I have been working on behind the scenes where it's just a one-off price a one-off charge there's no direct coaching and with that you'll get like eight weeks of training including progressive overloads. I'll give you a meal plan with uh, food options based on your size and your weight etc in, in groups and age etc. So I'll make different plans depending on different goals. I'll have set plans for set categories of people if, if that makes sense and I'm going to run. I'm working on that this week so I can get this fully run through so I can get this um, checked over by my coach who has like over 15 years of experience in coaching people and uh, yeah there's something I want to roll out and I'm going to run a competition with it so that the, the best three transformations over the eight week period are going to win money and basically that's it but more details will come but I just want to let you guys know that this is happening and it's something that I have been working on. It's just it takes a lot of time because I don't want it to just be a very plain cookie cutter plan. It, I want it to be somewhat um, focused on certain groups of people and 
obviously I'm not going to be able to take on board everybody. There is exclusion to apply, such as medical problems, age, etc. But I'll go into that more. Let's get into this video. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, we'll be here forever. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. So I'm actually super excited about I I always do think she is so so stunning, isn't she? Such a beautiful woman. Video. I did ask you guys on both Instagram and YouTube community to submit some questions and I was looking for some juicy questions. I have a lot of ones that I want to get through, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Yep. So the first question is one that was super popular. A lot of people were really curious if I missed being shredded. To be honest, I don't know about her, but I love being shredded. I don't like the process of getting shredded, but I love, I like that look. Um, I know it's not for everybody. It's not for most people. It's very difficult to achieve. It's, it put a lot of strain on my relationship. But the aesthetics of it, I really, really love. I do prefer that stage leanness. And I know I know how bad it is, but in terms of just my aesthetic preferences, I love it. I really do. Like, did I miss my old skinny body? Do you sometimes wish you could go back to being shredded? And the short answer to that is no. I think that there were a lot more negatives to being really shredded than there were positives. And I kind of have to go to answer this question properly. I being shredded, the only positive with it is basically that I think it looks nice for me. So, but in terms of getting there, it is bad. However, once I've had kids and once we've had kids and stuff, I am definitely going to still compete just because I love it. Like, I like the process of competing. I like the challenge of getting there. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to... I could look like that all year round. But the reality is, is that I don't want to be so strict and so restrictive in my life all the time to just look a certain way because... It's just too much hard work, to be honest. Like, it's okay to do it maybe now and again for a show, but to do it, for, to maintain it all year round, no, no. <laughs> I kind of have to go back into the mindset of when I was really shredded right before I went all in. So the mindset that I had at that time was that like, I really wanted to look really fit because I thought that's what the fitness community kind of wanted out of me. Well, she was a fitness model, so you do have to look a certain way. The whole... I suppose you could be fit and be overweight, but it doesn't really sell as much, does it? Granted, what she's looking like here is, it is very, very lean, but at the same time, you're, you are just gonna be more marketable, I suppose, as a fitness model when you have some muscle definition. I, like whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, um, but it's a bit like if you're a personal trainer and you're like really more overweight, it's, it does look bad, but it doesn't mean that you don't have the knowledge. It just means that obviously you're clearly not applying it. But I feel like certain things like fitness and lifestyle, it is something that if you're passionate about it, you follow those rules as well. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying that if you're overweight, you can't become a personal trainer or a fitness personality. Of course, of course you can. But it kind of is It's almost like a, a contradiction, an oxymoron, isn't it? Because fitness... And health it means like you're exercising and you're eating healthy and all of that so usually having like obesity which is considered a, a disease mostly which can be caused by overeating and eating bad food it kind of contradict it contradicts the lifestyle of being fit and healthy but I don't mean that to be horrible at all it's just I can see how how bad it can look because obviously you can anybody can have the knowledge and be good it's just they're just not applying it to themselves, but that doesn't mean they can't apply it to somebody else. Because like I never really felt fit enough. So I always thought that I needed to be more in shape. So I felt like this overwhelming pressure that I needed to To like go on a cut, I needed to be more fit. I was afraid that if I didn't maintain that level of leanness, so your body fat's gonna pop up here, or that level of fitness, that I would no longer be respected in the fitness industry. I have now realized is a bunch of bullshit, and it put me down a rabbit hole of being stuck, feeling like I needed to be lean all the time. I don't want to. She's quite petite, though. She's like very. Um... She's very small looking when she was lean. I think this 
on her, I think she actually does look better now, the way she looks now, uh, a little bit fuller. And I think probably most people do think that, like even my husband thinks I look much better now than what I do when I'm prepping. I just don't, I just don't agree. But I do still walk around like this and I don't hate the way that I look now. I like the way that I look now. I like the way that I look a lot. I like the way that I look a lot. Is that English? You know what I'm trying to say. But I think that she actually does look better, a little bit fuller, because she was verging on looking um, a bit worryingly on the weight. I felt like it aged me a lot and it made me look a lot older. And now somebody who is 30 years old, I feel like an old woman. I don't want to look any older than I than I already do now. So having, you know, like a healthier amount of body fat on my body livens up my face a lot. Gives me a curvy, more feminine physique, in my opinion. That is true. That is true. And it's a thing to bear in mind is as well is often when I start leaning out for a show people think that I'm growing that I'm getting more muscular and it's not that it's just an optical illusion so the leaner you are the more muscular you look usually speaking and also you've got to bear in mind when people see pictures it's like if I upload pictures onto Instagram and they're gym pictures I'm posing I'm in the right light I'm pumped etc so but then to be fair if I'm lean I do look it is it is an unusual physique I could try and condone it as much as I want but it is you don't see a lot of women that look like that, which is fine because I don't do it for anybody else. I do it for myself, but yeah, you do look more feminine when you are a bit softer for sure. Okay. You look great. That's what I like on me. I'm not saying that I have anything against certain bodies. I she looks really nice here. This is not what she looked. I think she has lost quite a bit of weight since she was at her heaviest because when she was at her heaviest doing the all in, she was, I think she was maybe considered obese as per BMI or overweight. And I would say she's probably in the healthy range now. I could be wrong because I haven't actually looked at her Instagram for it. Like, I don't follow her, but... Okay, so the next question is, would you ever do another fun cheat day video, even while going all in? I think this is interesting because she received quite a lot of backlash of doing the whole massive 10,000 calorie cheat days and stuff like that. So, I don't know what I think about it. Like, that in itself is goes back to the mukbangs and stuff like that. Is it okay... If it, like, why is it considered okay for somebody like her to sit there and eat like 10,000 calories or like 30 donuts or whatever? I don't know if she's done 30 donuts, but you get my point. When people are being judgmental over somebody else just because she has like a socially desirable body. Hmm. And then, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what she has to say. This question really excited me because I was actually planning on doing and attempting my first cheat day video. Because today I am doing. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I think it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a... Contradiction, isn't it? Like, you're sitting there basically saying, Oh, well, you know, being skinny or being stage lean is unhealthy, this and this and this. But then, in the same breath, two seconds later, it's like, Oh, I'm gonna eat as many calories as possible and recreate it. I don't really know what I think about that. You know, obviously, like, I do some food challenges now and again. But I do always disclaim them, saying that I'm doing it from the perspective of like almost science. It's not real science, obviously, because I'm doing it. But I'm doing it to show how it's making me feel and I'm being honest about it. And I'm not like, oh my God, it's amazing. So, but at the same time, I shouldn't even be doing that if I have a problem with it, which I get. But at the same time, I don't know, like that is such a, a gray area of when is overeating okay and when is it not and when is it considered indulging and binging and when is it not like to me it's not a binge because there's no emotions to it i do it for a video and like it's i do it from the perspective of science experimenting if you like um but i could see how people might see that and like yeah i don't know it's interesting it is interesting how on one side it's like oh well the pressures of the internet to look a certain way and then two seconds later yeah let's eat all the calories and not care it's like well they're both is kind of wrong now is it not is there a difference i don't know comment down below on if i'm missing something here you guys will have to let me know if you guys would still be interested in seeing that video because i think it would be a really fun and eye-opening video to make and it would just be for fun it wouldn't be for trying to overeat or anything like that i think it would be a great video to demonstrate like how much my appetite has decreased and how much more in tune i am with my like hunger and satiety signals so yeah i don't know i suppose from that perspective it is interesting but at the same time it is encouraging overeating which is not good 
under eating is not good and getting stage lean but then overeating is not good either is it so i don't know i don't know what i think about it i can see why and now she's obviously doing it from the perspective of an experiment but yeah i don't know Okay, so this is a two-part question, and I think this is a really, really good question. So the first part is, do you ever feel like you need to binge, like really eat a lot, just like your body is still testing you? If yes, when did it stop? And then the second part of the question is, did you feel psychological hunger? Like, was not hungry in the stomach, but your brain wanted you to eat? If yes, when did it stop? So some people may notice, some people may not, but I myself had eating disorders for a very long time. I had bulimia. Uh, I'm glad to say that it's not something that I've suffered from probably for maybe like, I don't know, like four or five years, five years, something like that. I had it on and off for years. Then I was good kind of for a while. Then I did a show and I gained lots of weight very rapidly after my show, after getting very lean, losing over 20 kilos in 20 weeks. And I couldn't cope with that because I didn't reverse diet. I didn't have anybody coaching me into, nobody told me about this, which is something that I drill home in people. If you lose a lot of weight or you're doing a show, it's hard. What's harder is, coming out of a show and then just being so hungry or eat wanting to eat food that you have restricted for a long period of time then the overeating happens and then the rapid weight gain happens and you can do months and months of dieting you can undo that in the matter of days is a lot they're going to be fat no but gaining like 10 to 15 to 20 pounds in a week is completely possible if you have been very very strict before this is why when you come from a show it's very important to do a reverse diet gradually increase your calories gradually taper back on your cardio as well as um enjoy food in moderation so if there's something you've been missing enjoy that but don't if you've been missing pizza and donuts and a burger don't eat everything every single day for a whole week maybe one day have some pizza the next day maybe have a donut and have like a donut don't eat five of them which is easier said than done but i can assure you applying some moderation to your intake after a show is um, not as hard as having to deal with your body bouncing back from being super shredded to basically losing all of that in a matter of weeks because or even less than a week because that's mentally really hard to deal with because when you're a prep you don't even realize that you're lean half the time but besides that point that's in terms of binging i don't really ever feel like to, i don't ever get binges anymore at all sometimes i eat more because i need to eat more sometimes it is because i want to and it is just like a physical uh, so it is just a psychological hunger um but you know for the most part i'm just kind of i stick to eating foods that make me feel good that i do crave i do crave actually eating healthy food sometimes if i have cravings that last for several days i'll indulge and sometimes it's just a case of it's a um, it's a it's um there's a like i know the difference between a real hunger so what a real hunger i know the difference between real hunger and cravings and sometimes they're kind of similar but for the most part you know like this weekend i had like some chinese steakhouse I don't feel bad about it i don't often have it but at the same time i just was i felt run down i felt like i just needed a boost of calories could i have healthier calories probably but at the same time i was feeling lazy i was feeling feeling moody i was pmsing hard i just wanted to have something dirty but that doesn't mean that there continues i'm just gonna get back on eating healthy and if i'm hungry usually what i'll do is i'll increase my caloric intake and then if the craving still exists, if the cravings still continue for certain foods after several days, which they rarely do, but if they do, then I'll just have that food after a few days. And then I'll touch that craving. But um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what she's going to answer because I just answered that and it probably didn't have anything to do with that question. <laughs> Do I ever really feel like I need to binge? And I'm assuming she means right now because she's wondering if my body is like still testing me. That is definitely a no. So more than anything right now, I'm struggling with the opposite problem. I feel like my appetite is really low. So I don't personally think my body is still trying to test me. I think that my body has a very clear understanding of its current appetite. And I don't really eat beyond that right now. And I usually eat three rolls. Sometimes I don't always finish all three, but and of course, like I am human, there are definitely days where I'm hungrier than other days, like usually a day where my appetite's pretty low.
low, it's usually followed by a day that my appetite is so much higher. And it also depends on like how much I train. Training makes a huge difference as well. So I would say I kind of do intuitive eating, not at the moment, because I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to do like a four week plan before Christmas where I'm actually eating more in order to lose weight, but then I'm a lot stronger and I can train more intense. It's a thing, but besides that, um, I normally speaking, I have a guideline of how many calories I aim to eat there or thereabouts. And I naturally seem to fall around certain macro ranges because that's just my preferred way of eating. But if I'm not following a plan, then I do apply it like that. Some days I eat only 2000, other days I'll eat 2700, 3000 calories. Some days I'll eat like, I don't know, 50 grams of carbs. Other days I'll eat 200 grams of carbs. But for the most part, I kind of eat a lot of the same foods because I just like it and it's convenient and I know it works. But if I do need to go over it, that's fine. So and a lot of that is down to my training and my energy output in that too. And when I'm not following a plan, I train intuitively. So if I'm feeling weak, I'll just train with longer rest periods at higher repetitions at slower tempos. If I'm feeling strong, maybe I'll do some strength testing where I'm working in five reps or three reps or one rep maxes. But unless I'm, if I'm more focused in terms of a goal, which is usually like cutting body fat, then I'm more routine, reg regimented with my training and my diet because that is just what works for me. I can do if it fits your macros when I'm doing a cut because it just doesn't work for me the same way that eating the same food every single day at the same time works. Obviously you can vary protein sources. So one day I'll have beef and the other day I'll have salmon or one day I'll have chicken and the next day I'll have like a white fish. But usually I do kind of eat the same things. I do kind of stick to the same fats, the same sort of carbohydrates, but uh, that's a different story for a different day. In my opinion, I've experienced both physical hunger and mental hunger. And the mental hunger was definitely at its peak when I first went all in. This is just a snack. I had breakfast already. Gotcha. Like I said, all bets were off. Floodgates open, hunger was rampant. I would eat and eat and eat probably like every... So she's, I'll put the video down below because I'm going to have to cut out parts of certain questions because otherwise we will be here for two hours. She talks about like how it's changed from all in and that the hunger has definitely changed. I just wanted to show, say that it's nice that she's showing more of the healthy whole foods that she's eating because in previous videos when she was doing all in, it was a lot of junk food, a lot of processed junk food, which is, um, it's kind of like bad advertising. And I get like, it's just to eat the calories, but at the same time, it's, it kind of gave that, gave that approach a bit of a bad name, in my opinion. If she's sitting here and saying like, oh, well, basically I had lots of oatmeal and sweet potatoes, and then she has a snack with uh, avocado and toast, it's, I understand it. Like she's craving food as opposed to just like junk food which is nice to see um i think it does what the approach a lot more justice than just so it's showing reels of her eating burgers and pizzas basically single hour in my first and second month and i was probably still hungry after that i was but i went had to stop because i need to use more or else i'll just keep eating i was super hungry and i would just allow myself to eat so much so that i felt like i had like a perma food baby like i was just like my skin would feel like it was stretching my physical fullness was definitely there but my mental fullness wasn't satisfied like i would feel like so big and bloated see i couldn't do that i can't personally maybe that is some remnants of having had eating disorders myself but being full up like that, I, I absolutely hate it. And it's not just like, I don't like the feeling of it, but it just makes me so unproductive. When I'm full up like that, I just become tired and lazy and I have no energy just because my body is so busy digesting. So like, don't get me wrong, I like eating a lot of food, but I definitely know when to say stop as well. Like unless I'm doing a video, sometimes I will eat beyond what my na natural hunger cues are. But eating to that point, Oh, I don't enjoy it at all. My stomach would feel like it's gonna pop and I would still be like, man, I could go for some ice cream though. My mental hunger was never satisfied. Even in those times though, to be honest with you, I wouldn't ever constitute the way that I ate as a binge because I would eat like a meal and I would eat a little bit more and be like, okay, I could eat a little bit more. I wouldn't completely lose control. I was actually very mindful of what I was doing. A binge, from what I understand, is mostly a mental thing. Like a binge can be, well, I know that in that video with Abby Sharp they talked about binges, but it's it's either, it can be large volumes of food, but from what I understand, it's largely to do also with the, the emotional side of it. If you're eating because you're stressed, if you're eating because you're sad, if you have feelings of guilt afterwards, or 
shame and stuff like that that's usually what constitutes a binge from what i understand but i could be wrong so i know that that woman that wasn't abby sharp talked about it but i kind of forgot what she said but there is some rules around i mean maybe there's binge eating disorder the difference between binge eating disorder because a binge can be i don't know i don't know correct me if i'm wrong I'm uh, all addressing in the next video. <laughs> doing and kind of mentally cataloging how I was feeling and what I was doing for the sake of like documentation. And I would write in my journal how I was feeling and how I was doing. So I was definitely well aware of what was going on. I don't think I ever like lost control. And that usually characterizes a traditional binge. And next question. How do you deal with the fact that even though you are healthier and happier now, a lot of the fitness industry slash society, etc., preferred you when you were thinner? I don't even understand why this would be a concern to her. If you're doing something that makes you happy, then if you're happy with your life, and with, with yourself and with what you're doing, what other people say about you, it literally bears no relevance or whatsoever. People have their thoughts and opinions about me. I'm lucky to have a pretty good community for the most part. But at the same time, like if people disagree with what I'm saying, fine. I don't proclaim to be um, the all knowing, you know, I'm not saying that my word is the be all and end all. I know that I'm not afraid to address my mistakes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to learn new things. But at the same time, in terms of like the way I physically look, I could not care whatsoever about what anybody thinks about me because I like the way that I look. The only person who, that ma who matters for me is whether my husband doesn't like the way that I look or whether I don't like the way that I look. But otherwise, why would I care? A lot of people seem to forget that being muscular as a female, it already makes you an outlier in, so in society. So you're already breaking social norms. So if you're already doing something that makes you different, it is something that you have to work very hard for. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen, right? It's years and years of dedication. It's years and years of training. It's years and years of mining what's on your plate. And it didn't happen by accident. You know, I had, I had a choice in looking the way that I do and it was completely my choice. It is completely my choice to look like this because I like this for me. If you don't like it, that's your that's your problem. That's absolutely not my problem. A lot of women don't wanna look like me and a lot of women can't look like me because they just haven't got the genetics and a lot of people don't have that desire to work on their body like that. And that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if people come in my comment section and say that I look like a man or you know look like a man insert the emoji the members only emoji or basically accuse me of being like a like a steroid abuser it's just it just shows how little first of all you know and second of all it's like well if you think that okay cool guess what what do you want me to do about it i'm not gonna argue it or like provide like a blood panel to show that i'm either natural or that I'm female, you know, at the end of the day, I know, I know my truth and that's all that matters. So don't worry, especially if you're on social media or you're putting yourself out there as a influencer, if you like, if you're going to get worried about the negativity, just don't get online. Simple as that. Nobody's forcing you to be online. Nobody's telling you to become an, a person on YouTube or on Instagram or whatever. And if you can't deal with the criticism, then don't go online because there's always going to be people that don't like you and that's okay. It's totally fine. People don't, you don't have to like everybody and not everybody has to like you. I couldn't imagine a world of living where people just, everybody loves you. It's, um, it can't be good for the ego. It's good to be humbled sometimes. So this is something that I've kind of had to deviate from to have like such a myopic view of the fitness industry because I've come to learn that the fitness industry is actually a lot broader than I was originally aware of. Like I always kind of fell into the niche of fitness of like people who kind of stayed really, really shredded year round. That is just one facet of the fitness industry. Would I say that that fitness industry no longer prefers me? They probably prefer me thinner, which would constitute their perception of what fit is. I kind of feel like I left that behind and I've joined like a different community a more body acceptance community yeah she's part of the fat acceptance which is a double-edged sword because they like her as she is now but should she ever naturally lose weight because of the intuitive eating or whatever she's doing that will become a problem because they're, they're pretty unforgiving for people that want to try and um not even want to try but for people that just happen to lose weight and become um more have more socially acceptable bodies which she does anyway like She's clearly not really part of the fat acceptance movement, but I think they like her because she has gained a lot of weight. And I'm pretty sure that there was some backlash for her having lost some weight, but I'm not, don't quote me on that though.
People here in this community are so much more charitable with me when it comes to my body and accepting me at any weight. So I just realized that I didn't touch on like the societal pressure. She did mention both fitness industry and society. In my opinion, I don't really feel like society rewards ultra skinny. I feel like society rewards somewhere in like the Goldilocks zone of looking. Yeah, she. I think she's definitely right there because you do get judged. People do have judgments when you're either too lean or too muscular or even too skinny and when you carry too much body fat. Neither is desired. What is desired is for most women to be curvy, to have thighs, to have a small waist, to have big boobs, like a traditional curvy figure. And I don't mean like curvy like that. I mean curvy like that. And that can come in different sizes, even within the fat acceptance movement, usually speaking, the women that tend to be more hourglass shaped as opposed to um, like apple shaped, I guess, they tend to be preferred in terms of even marketing for clothing, etc. because I don't know why. That's just the way it is. I, I don't know why. I don't know the size. I'm sure there's a lot of science behind it. Maybe it's to do with childbearing and I don't know. Like, I'm sure it goes way, way back into the, uh, what is it, the etymology, say we call it? Like the science of human thinking and evolution behind that. I don't know exactly, but I'm sure there is a logic behind why women with larger hips, well, it is to do with childbearing, but uh, anyway. Still looking like not being too lean, but not being too overweight, which is a difficult place to find yourself. It's like you have to be just right for society to accept you. And that just right is difficult to satisfy. And that is why societal pressure is just so hard, especially on women, because women have to be in this like just right zone for society to deem them. You don't have to be. You, you, should, you just need to be happy with yourself and then don't care about what society thinks. Acceptable or beautiful and it's a tough place to be. And the easy way to deal with it is just from like overall happiness. And that's what gets me through not feeling like I need to seek acceptance, but just like trying to be happy. And I don't, maybe this is a, a me thing, I don't know. But generally the opinions of others, it matters nothing to me. I could not care less. Obviously, it's important for my audience to that we have a good rapport and that if I do something you hold me accountable that I'm mindful of your feelings that I just don't disregard that. So obviously opinions do matter, but it doesn't matter to me at all whether somebody thinks that I'm ugly or pretty. Like, it, it, I don't understand why people are so worried about what other people think about them. I, I really don't. Okay, so this is a good question. This is a question about my train. I just skipped several minutes. I'll link the video down below if you want to watch it because I don't want this to be a three hour long video, basically. How has your mindset and approach towards the gym slash lifting changed slash evolved slash adjusted since All In in comparison to pre All In Stephanie? So the evolution of my thought process behind my training has changed a lot since I've gone All In. To start, pre All In Stephanie was so hyper-focused on hypertrophy training. So when you get really lean, you lose a lot of muscle. And I felt like I was losing so so much of the muscle that I had worked so hard for. So I was like predominantly focused on hypertrophy training. You know, when you get really lean, you lose a lot of strength when you lose a lot of weight. Uh, maybe, usually speaking in my dieting process, I don't actually lose a lot of strength. My strength kind of stays the same. Sometimes I gain more strength. It's only in the last few weeks before a show when I'm like super lean, but then if she walks around super lean all the time, maybe. But you shouldn't lose a lot of strength. Like some people, they start dieting and then literally within a couple of days of dieting, they're like, oh my God, I've, I'm like so weak now. If you're really weak from the get go, then you're probably not dieting right or your coach or your trainer is sticking you on a caloric deficit that's too high, which is obviously not good because your strength shouldn't really make too much, it shouldn't take too much of a hit. It should only take a hit really towards the end of a cut. But otherwise it should kind of stay the same. If anything, I find I become stronger because A, I'm dropping body fat, my strength that stays the same or it increases. And it's just because I'm just fueling my body regularly with quality, quality fuel, if you like. So I actually become more of a machine. I function a lot better. But obviously at some point where you lose a lot of body fat, like then it does, that does become a problem. But you should never be eating like very, very low calories. Um, if you have a coach who's telling you to, from the get go, eat like a thousand calories and do hours of cardio, I'd, I'd get somebody else. I've never had to do that. People are differently, obviously, but I'm coaching quite a few people. Some people are doing cuts and none of them have are having to do very extreme things. Some are a bit more strict than others. But for the most part, I, do, I can't imagine having somebody doing like a thousand calories and doing hours of cardio because it's just, there's something wrong with your coaching techniques in my opinion, if that's happening.
strength training just wasn't on my priority list because I was really bad at it. So when you lose a lot of strength and you don't feel like you're good at like the compound lifts anymore, you feel really weak and your ego is taking a hit, you're less inclined to do that type of training because you're just bad at it. And I felt- It's also when you're dieting for a long time, you do have to be careful with doing like one rep max training because fatigue and just pressure on the joints, uh, especially in the last few weeks of a show, it's, it's also dangerous to train in the strength training as in like one to five reps that sort of uh, ranges because you the, the the chance of injury is just so much greater so i never understand that when people are like a couple of weeks out from a show and they're doing one rep max it's like why are you even bothering it doesn't it doesn't make any sense it's like the chance of you potentially injuring yourself now are so much greater that is it even worth doing it like just doing your one rep max is where you can eat properly again and you're you know you're not as tired from just dieting and doing all the cardio but i don't know I, I never, like, when I'm in prep, my training is quite different from when I'm out of prep. I never do strength testing at all when I'm in a prep. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe in the beginning, but not in towards the end. About the fact that I used to feel and be so strong, and I lost that. Like, I was just, like, desperately trying to hold on to any muscle that I had left. Like, I would train glutes, like, no kidding. Before I went all in, I trained glutes, like, five or six times a week. It was, like, every day. Every day was glute day. Every day was leg day. When I went all in, and I had all this energy from all the food that I was eating, I was like getting back into strength training. I'm gonna get my dad. Strength training is nice, I'm not gonna lie. There is something very satisfying about getting physically strong. I'd lift up and get my squat up, I'm gonna be strong. And I was so motivated by the initial food intake that I really wanted to get my strength up. So like, this is what happened in my all-in journey. So at the beginning, it was super high, then it came crashing down in my second month of being all-in because I got super sick. So I went on a, a trip to Bali and Australia, got hella sick. I could not recover from this terrible cold. I was weak and fatigued and tired and I was just like fast. I wonder if that's to do with the shock to the system going from one extreme to another or maybe it's just going to different continents and different climates. It could be completely circumstantial. And then it went back down because at my heaviest weight, I was oddly uncoordinated. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's because I gained a lot of weight really fast, but like all my coordination went out the window. It was. It can't be healthy to lose, to gain a lot of weight. Just as like losing a lot of weight really quickly, unless you are really obese obviously if you're like 600 pounds you could probably lose like 50 pounds in a month but she gained something like 50 pounds in the space of like three months or something i believe which is that's a lot of weight to gain in a short period of time like my body didn't i didn't know where to put my extra body like i didn't know what where to put my stance and my deadlift was all different okay i can't, can't even squat as deep in the hole anymore because my thighs won't let me I just felt all sorts of uncoordinated i don't even know if i've talked about this but i did and maybe that was because i gained weight so quickly that i didn't have enough time for like my mental coordination to catch up with how much extra body that i had there was a period of time when i was at my heaviest weight that i i, I find it interesting that she's pointing this out now and she didn't do it before and it's kind of like a joke but surely that's concerning no if you're if you can't work around your own body because it's so much bigger than you used to that's it's interesting at least she's being honest like i'm surprised actually that uh not surprised that she's being honest i'm just surprised that 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 this is a thing and it does make sense because you are so used to operating in your body being a certain way then if it suddenly expands or really shrinks very rapidly you're Hmm, interesting. I felt very uncomfortable in the gym. Like I felt like the cellulite through my leggings was just like unflattering and lighting that is meant to give you like the shadowy appearance when you're super shredded. Does the opposite effect when you're not shredded. It emphasizes every single lump and bump and all of your flaws. I hated all the mirrors. So I took a break from lifting again. So when I took a step back and then I got back into like, cause you know when you take some time off, you're like itching to get back into the gym. So I would itch to get back into it and I would. And then worldwide pandemic happened and the quarantine happened and then I had to train at home. Did, was she ever honest about this during her journey before? I haven't seen a lot, I, don't, I, I haven't followed her journey. I've seen only some videos that obviously I've covered here. But was she ever honest about that? How the, the weight gain and the obesity was a problem. Um, not the obesity, the cellulite, sorry. How it made her feel really insecure and that's what stopped her from training. Cause I don't think she has. And doesn't that kind of contradict the whole thing that she's trying to do now. I don't know, maybe it isn't, maybe she, like, maybe I think along the lines of health at every size and what's the other thing called? Body positivity, because like, in theory, you should just be happy with yourself regardless. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't like my cellulite. Like, I don't like that I have cellulite, but I know it's just a thing that basically, well, like 90% of women have. So it is what it is, but I would prefer to have legs without it. But at the same time, it's not that easy. You know, I have to be quite lean in order to not have cellulite. 
Next question. Do you still have any food rules that you have trouble letting go of? And two, what has been your favorite part of your all-in journey so far? So for the first uh, part of the question, do I have any food rules right now? The one thing that I would say that would be loosely interpreted as like a rule is that I'm really trying to eat breakfast and I'm really trying to space my meals throughout the day just to pick up my appetite a bit. In terms of like something that I restrict myself from, like I, I don't eat this or don't eat that, like that type of rule, I don't have that. There's no food that's off limits and I eat whatever I want. I'm definitely not scared of eating like Thanksgiving just happened. And I hope you guys to my American uh, subscribers, I really hope that you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I, I encouraged everybody on Thanksgiving on my Instagram to make sure that you do not fear food that you deserve to eat. So it's funny she says that actually, because I actually send an email out to all of my clients saying basically the same thing, that part of lifestyle, which is what I do, lifestyle coaching, it is also to enjoy food and to not fear social occasions. You need to be able to do that. Like social occasions are gonna happen. There's many days in the year to be very conscious about the food you eat, but social occasions and special occasions like the holidays, just enjoy them with your family. If you're mega concerned, just eat in moderation. You don't have to sit there and eat 6,000 calories, but just eat the food, enjoy yourself, and then afterwards you can just get back on track. Don't worry about it, just enjoy the holidays because these are special occasions. So I think it's always sad when people do very heavy restriction on on the holidays or they fear the food. Don't, don't do it. Like a bad meal isn't gonna undo all of your hard work. A good meal isn't gonna make you like, um, healthy and fit and a skinny legend but a bad meal isn't also got a bad meal isn't gonna undo weeks of hard work or months of hard work and people know this but i think sometimes i just need to hear that that having these food rules is just so inhibiting to a happy and like joyful life because having social meals with loved ones and family is such a good part of life and i wouldn't want anybody to miss out on that so i just had thanksgiving ate all of the food that i wanted the mac and cheese the biscuits when we had dessert it was an apple pie cheesecake and it was delicious i have the apple pie this cake does look good. No rules and I don't like restrict. By the way, for my second channel this weekend I'm gonna film a Christmas around the world. So I'm gonna get dishes from all over the world, like a dish. Not literally from every country. I'll probably do like maybe one or two uh, meat dishes with like a dessert and some side dishes. And uh, yeah, just maybe talk about it as I'm prepping the food so I can like educate you guys. But uh, I'm looking forward to doing it, like a big, big cooking video in any type of way. And then the second part of the question is kind of just related to Thanksgiving in my opinion. What has been your favorite part of your all-in journey so far is the social element of eating. I'm gonna end the video here because, you know, her relationship with her partner is not really something I care about to be quite honest. Yeah, I'll leave the video down below. I hope you found it interesting. I didn't really have an awful lot to say really about what she's doing. It was just, I guess, giving more <laughs> my opinion on my own experiences, I guess. Um, I am gonna go though. I'm actually got, I've actually got a Thai massage book this morning, which I'm looking forward to because I've been very achy, very stiff. So I'm looking forward to a massage. And uh, yeah, I'll be live later for my members. I'll be sure to do a update soon. And that's about it for me. Tomorrow I'll upload my Instagram. Instagram chooses what I eat on my second channel. And that will be the only video for my second channel for uh, this week. The other video I'll upload next week. And then from next week, I'm gonna go to Sweden. So I probably don't expect many uploads from me at all. Definitely no reactions. I'll probably do a few vlogs here and there. So if you're interested in seeing my travels to Sweden, um, we'll go around there. We'll probably go to, I wanna to go to Stockholm. I wanna potentially go to Örebro. I wanna to go to this park as well, which is a couple of hours north of Vesteros, where my family lives. I might do a meetup. If I'm gonna to go to Stockholm, I might do a uh, meetup actually. So if you're in Sweden and you live in Stockholm, let me know down below or actually email me, email me. My email details are down below or, and then what I can do is I can potentially arrange a meetup, a subscriber meetup, that'd be really cool. Yeah, we might go to the Fernebu Fjerdens National Park. Fernebu, Fernebu Fjerdens. Wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So I might go there, I wanna go to Urbo, I wanna go to Stockholm, do some things whilst we're there, kind of show you guys, I'm gonna be training with my brother which I'm looking forward to showing you guys that. And um, yeah, so it, I'll definitely upload some vlogs in terms of vlogging. I'll definitely upload some travel vlogs, but there won't be any reactions for a little while, but that's cool though. So anyway, I'm gonna go. Thanks a lot for watching, comment, like, subscribe. Dislike the video, if you dislike the video, let me know down below why. Insert a hamburger. Let's insert a hamburger emoji. And uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, a good week, and I'll be back 
probably on Wednesday. See ya.